Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So here we have a 2018 Nissan Leaf 40 kilowatt hour. And in this video, we're going to have a look at what's under the bonnet and we'll lift it up on the lift and have a look at what's underneath. So I have done a few of these videos on the channel looking at electric cars and looking underneath the bonnet. So do check that out if you want to see the same on another type of EV. But uh, let's just get the bonnet open here. So looking inside the bonnet on the 40 kilowatt hour, it is very similar to all the previous generation leaves, the 24 and the 30 kilowatt hour. However, they now put this plastic cover over the top of the uh, motor stack. I really don't know why it doesn't seem to serve any purpose. Maybe apart from hiding the aluminium cover because these do all corrode. As you can see, we've got surface corrosion on the aluminium, all completely normal but they can look a bit uh, untidy, so I guess that's why they do that, just to smarten it up a little bit, but completely pointless, to be honest. So, this lot here is your engine, your electric motor stack. So at the bottom, we've got an electric motor that is powering the front wheels, and then on top of that, all the other electronics is uh, inside these aluminium enclosures, and that will be your charging system and your inverter and it's all water cooled as well. So at the front here is a radiator and we've got a coolant bottle here and uh, that is uh, pumping water around this metal enclosure to keep everything cool. These Nissan Leafs do not pump water around the battery pack. Uh, to be fair, not many electric cars actually pump water around the battery pack to keep them cool. Most of them will use um, the air conditioning system to cool the battery. However, on the Nissans, you don't get any of that. The cooling is just done by air blowing under the car while the car is moving. So everything that is orange is the high voltage cables. So there'll be a big cable down the bottom there, which you can't really see coming from the battery pack. That's a 400 volt um, DC battery pack so that's why everything is in orange because uh, it means high voltage and uh, the dangerous bit um, and then at the front here is our charging ports Chadamo DC charging port for rapid charging and then your AC charging port there for uh, slow overnight home charging so the cables from the charging port are here again in uh, orange to show that it's high voltage. And then over on this side, we've got our um, brake fluid reservoir there. And then all of this is uh, air conditioning hoses for the uh, heating and ventilation system. And then uh, there is our braking system. Uh, here we've got a fuse box and another couple of uh, fuse panels there. And this is the 12 volt battery. So all electric vehicles have a 12 volt battery. Uh, and many question the purpose of a 12 volt battery, but in reality it's just the same as a petrol or diesel vehicle. Um, in a petrol or diesel vehicle, that 12 volt battery is turning over the engine to start it. In an electric vehicle, it's effectively doing the job. Obviously it's not turning over an engine, but it's starting the vehicle. So when you blip your central locking and unlock the vehicle, that's all being powered by the 12 volt battery. And when you get in and push the button to start the vehicle, the 12 volt battery is providing power to the contactors to switch on the power from the 400 volt traction battery underneath. So the electric vehicles are completely reliant on the 12 volt battery to start them up, just like all other cars. Um, so if this goes dead, the car won't start. Or indeed, if it's dead enough, you can't even unlock the central locking to get in in the first place. The reason why they keep the standard 12 volt batteries is because all your ECUs, your lights, wipers, dash, stereo, um, central locking, electric door mirrors, is all standard 12 volt, all standard components from the, you know, their parts bins from all the other vehicles. And it just keeps everything cheaper, easier and safer as well because you wouldn't want the traction battery powering all these ancillary components. You just keep it nice and easy, low voltage from a 12 volt battery. So obviously the 12 volt battery needs to be charged. So on a normal petrol or diesel vehicle, you will have an alternator which charges the battery when the engine is turning. Um, obviously we don't have anything like that in an EV. Um, so what you have is a converter in here in the um, motor stack 
and that's taking 400 volt DC from the traction battery and converts it to 14 volt DC to charge the battery while you drive. And on most EVs that's working uh, when you turn the ignition on and start the car. Uh, and it's charging the battery all the time you're driving. Some cars, like the Renault Zoe for example, that, will, um, that conversion will kick in as soon as the car's woken up. So for example, as soon as you unlock or open the doors, the 12 volt battery starts getting charged then. So as a user, the only thing you would uh, be checking underneath this bonnet would be your screen wash here. Um, even the coolant level, you've got a maximum in there, but it doesn't really change on electric vehicles because that coolant is doing an awful lot less than a, uh, a cooling system would be doing on a ICE vehicle. So let's get it up on the lift and have a look underneath. So, not an awful lot we can see underneath because it's got these uh, covers on it. Um, but obviously here is our battery pack and uh, underneath the uh, engine bay we have got uh, a felt cover here. So I'm going to whip that off and we'll have a closer look. So I've taken the uh, engine cover off there and look at that, I found a cigarette butt on the inside there. So I can't imagine that's fallen in there from uh, when it's previously had a Nissan service because I can't imagine Nissan techs are allowed to smoke in the workshop. So I guess that's been uh, pulled in off the uh, road surface. So looking underneath we can now see our electric motor here and this is driving the front wheels. You can see a drive shaft there and then another drive shaft there. So at the back here is a small transmission. You don't get a gearbox as such on electric vehicles but you do get a little transmission which is just reducing the speed of the electric motor down and uh, you've got an oil fill plug up there. Generally you don't change oils on, on the transmissions because there's no moving gears at all, it's just a fixed ratio drive so the oil will generally last the life of the vehicle. So we can't see much else uh, underneath here um, but anyway here's our um, steering rack and we can see there the big fat orange cable so that's bringing the main power feed from the battery pack to the motor stack here and then turning around looking back at the front of the vehicle we can see the radiator up at the front here with two electric fans so the air intake on these is just that slot at the bottom because uh, an EV leads uh, very little cooling but you still do have a full-size radiator there behind the uh, blanked off grill. So let's look along the rest of the vehicle. So underneath here we've got the battery pack. There are trays covering the battery um, over the full length and full width of the vehicle. I'm not going to whip these trays off because there's actually not much to see under there. But the battery pack starts about here and goes the full length of the car to about here. But as you can see, um, it doesn't protrude at all so if we look at the side of the vehicle we've got the sills here and it doesn't protrude hardly anything just a, a centimeter or two from below the edge of the um, sills so it's tucked up right underneath the car well and as i said it's all covered in plastic tray so it's all very um, aerodynamic all helps with the range but there's very little cooling slots um, so with a Nissan Leaf they don't have any active thermal management on the pack um, whereas other EVs will um, force um, air conditioning air through the pack and around the pack. Um, some newer ones will use water um, being forced through the pack to cool it whereas on the Nissans they don't use any of that. Um, but I was expecting to see a few more vents to allow the air to blow through but there's none really. The pack is pretty uh, sealed from the elements um, apart from just around the top. So yeah, not much air is going to get through that pack or around that pack. Um, but anyway, generally in the UK these are fine. There was this rapid gate um, situation a while ago. Um, but uh, in the UK climate they're generally fine and for most people you can do 
a couple of rapid charges a day and you don't get any overheating. But in other climates around the world where they have hotter temperatures, you can have a bit of a problem with Nissans with uh, batteries getting too warm. So here we are at the back of the vehicle. We've got a plastic tray here. There seems to be quite a void under here. Um, I don't think there's any equipment in here. Uh, on the original Leaf, they used to put the charger at the back of the car. Um, but it doesn't seem to be anything in there. I'm not going to whip this tray off. Um, but uh, yeah, seems they could have actually had more storage space in the boot or had better under tray uh, storage. Uh, but anyway, um, and there's our battery pack at the top there. Um, but yeah, not much to see really. And the rest of it, standard stuff. You know, we've got our suspension here, shops, springs. Um, these don't have electronic handbrakes. They still use uh, cable um, foot operated brakes. So there's no electric motor here on the rear brakes. Um, but yeah, not much else to see really. So yeah, there we go. I think that's about it. Uh, this is just intended as a beginner's guide because when people are first looking at electric vehicles, they often want to have a look at under the bonnet because they really don't know what to expect. Um, so that's the purpose of these videos. And as I said, there's others on the channel on uh, doing the same on uh, pretty much most models of electric vehicles. So if you found this video useful, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube because that really does help other people find the channel and uh, more videos coming soon.